Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, last weekend was a monumental weekend for us at Shepherd of the Hills as we had a visit by our incoming associate pastor, our soon-to-be ordained new pastor, Andy Johnson, along with his wife, Kara, and their little daughter, Collins, one of their three children. And by just about every measure, it was a wonderful visit, with one exception, one pretty important exception. They had hoped to visit a bunch of houses while they were here and to purchase a house. Well, they visited a bunch of houses, 17 in just the the small amount of time that they were here, but they did not go back to St. Louis having bought a house. They actually put an offer down on one house while they were here, and it was during the Sunday services last weekend that they received word that their offer was not accepted. They were outbid by an amount $30,000 above the asking price. Kind of hard to compete with that, but that's not all that unusual right now. That is the housing market in San Antonio for you. The housing market right now is very competitive, very overpriced, very hard to find the right house in the right place for the right price. It's a real challenge. I invite you to keep the Johnsons in your prayers. We know that God will provide the right house for them in His timing, but I certainly invite your prayers for them. In an extreme seller's market like it is right now in San Antonio, being able to find the right house at the right price at the right time can feel like an impossible task. Some things in life do feel unattainable at times. For you, it might be a house, or it might be something else, maybe a job. You've had interview after interview, but just nothing has panned out. Or maybe it's relational connection that just feels unattainable for you. You see other people, and they seem to get along so well with their family and have such enriching friendships. Or You look at the social media feeds and see everybody's highlight reels of their lives, and you feel left out, you feel lonely, isolated by comparison. seems like it's just not something you can have in your life for some reason. Or maybe the thing that feels unattainable to you is it's more intangible. Maybe it's something like respect. Try as hard as you can, but you just can't seem to have that respect, to measure up in your own eyes or other people's eyes. Or maybe what's elusive for you is a sense of peace, calm, contentment, because all you feel is unsettled and anxious about life. Sometimes those things can just feel out of our reach, those things that we want so bad, but we just aren't able to get our hands around. And when that happens, it can be very frustrating and discouraging and even make us want to throw up our hands and just give up. What's the point? And if you have felt frustrated by things that you've not been able to get a grasp of, things that have seemed outside your reach. Well, the story of Pentecost is especially a great story for you today because it teaches us that there is one thing in this world, at least one thing, that is within reach, and that is a relationship with God. And the reason for that is not because we've reached up to God and somehow gotten a hold of Him, but it's because God has reached down to us and has gotten a hold of us by His Holy Spirit. There may be all kinds of things in this world that we just can't get our hands on, but God, a relationship with God, that is not to be among those things. That is one thing we can always count on and always be assured about, that God wants and delivers that relationship with us. And we see that in the story of the first Christian Pentecost, as Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to dwell among all kinds of different people at one time and one place. Now, this event was predicted by Jesus multiple times in the Gospels, and then even right before it's recorded in the book of Acts. The story of Pentecost is Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 1 was the ascension of Jesus, which was our text for last weekend. And during the ascension story, during that text, Jesus made multiple predictions of the sending of the Holy Spirit. He said in Acts 1 verse 5, You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then three verses later, Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now notice who's doing what here. 
the disciples are told that the Holy Spirit was going to come upon them, that they'd be baptized in it, they would be passive recipients. God would be doing the work. God imparts his spirit. He bestows his spirit. It's his gift to us. And it was his gift on that first Christian Pentecost as well. And the reason why I call it the first Christian Pentecost is because Pentecost was already an existing Jewish holiday. It was a harvest festival dating way back into Old Testament times. And also at one point it became associated with Moses receiving the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. So it had this, these layers of meaning, very important festival for the Jewish people. And just like we might gather with family for Thanksgiving or Christmas and everybody from out of town comes together to one place, same thing here. This was a major holiday. And so people from out of town, people who've been scattered all over the known world, they came together, family got together in Jerusalem. They all came home to be with each other. And so everybody had come together. They were in this one place, the disciples and many other Jewish people. And that's when some unusual things started happening. Inside that room, uh, a loud sound like a mighty rushing wind reached their ears. And then uh, over them, tongues as of fire. So we picture flames above their heads. But those were not the central miracles of the story. The central miracle was what happened after that, which was the wonders of God being declared in multiple languages. And that was the central miracle because the other stuff recedes into the background, but the focus is on the languages and what is declared in those languages, the mighty works of God. And so the people were in confusion as to what was happening. They were speculating. Peter stood up to clarify, to interpret the event for them. And when he did that, he drew from the book of Joel in the Old Testament, a prophecy. And Peter said that prophecy was happening in their midst. The prophecy included these words, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Again, who's doing the work? God is, I will pour out. But it was on all flesh. So this all-encompassing statement. God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Many things in life may feel unattainable, unaccessible, out of reach, but God's Spirit is not to be among them because it is God's desire to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. All means everybody. And we see just a microcosm of that on the first Christian Pentecost as there were people from all different kinds of nations. And we heard some of those nations in the reading earlier, a series of, of different places and peoples. And along with that, the prophecy from Joel said that the Spirit was coming to men and to women. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, it said. The Spirit comes to all ages. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. The Spirit even comes to the lowliest on my male servants and female servants. And then to drive the message home of God's grace for all people, Peter concluded his quotation of the book of Joel with these words. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone. Now that's a big statement. And maybe you need to hear that statement reinforced today. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved everyone. If you have faced some kind of terrible calamity in your life, you might need to be reminded of that because maybe you worry that this calamity, this disaster is God showing his disapproval or or somehow it's God rendering judgment upon you. Or if you have committed some kind of a sin that you feel really bad about, maybe you worry that you've fallen too far from God's grace. Or if life has been treating you harshly, perhaps you worry that you're out of favor with God. But the scripture tells us that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so that means that by faith, God has you firmly in his grasp. And you belong to him. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is not a teaching known as universalism. Universalism would say everyone will be saved. 
everyone saved regardless of what they believe. That's not what it says. It says everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. This message is consistent throughout Scripture, connecting faith with a promise of salvation and blessing. That the way that blessing comes into our life is through our relationship with God, and that relationship is established through faith. Psalm 128 says, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Not just blessed is everyone, but blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. That blessing does not come to us apart from faith. Romans chapter 1 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. 1 John 5, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Everyone who is in Christ receives God's eternal promises. By God's grace, anyone can be a part of God's everyone. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So that includes you, and that includes me. It included the people on the first Pentecost, those who were in that room and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Reminded me of an iconic moment in TV history when everybody in the room got a gift. Many years ago on the Oprah Winfrey show, Oprah told her studio audience, all women, that everyone in the room was getting a gift. And so some smiling ladies walked into the room holding serving trays with little gift wrap boxes on them. And everyone in the audience was given one of those boxes Once everybody had one, they were told to unwrap them and open them. And then screams began to fill the room, excited screams. And women were jangling car keys. And then Oprah began to walk around the room and she said, You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. Everybody gets a car. Everybody in the room got the gift on that first Christian Pentecost. Everybody in the room got the gift. They were all hearing the mighty works of God. The Spirit had descended and was filling them. And in this room, too, everybody gets a gift today. I wish I could say I was giving you a new car. That'd be nice. But you get something even better today. You get Jesus. You didn't have a box with car keys placed in your hand as you walked into church today, but you did have something placed in your hands, and that's the bread and the wine. When later it's connected to the words of Christ, it is for us the body and blood of Jesus. You're given Jesus today, and that's the greatest gift of all. And there's so many other things we wish we could get our hands on, we wish could be a part of our lives, those things that feel unattainable and they frustrate us. But let me tell you, None of those things last. And those can all be taken away. But what you've been given today, Jesus, well, that can't be taken away from you. Because you belong to God through faith in Christ. And today, through word and through sacrament, you get Jesus. You get the gospel. Now, our situation is a little different than the first Christian Pentecost. No mighty rushing wind. No fires above our heads. No spontaneous languages, but there are some important commonalities. The same Savior is proclaimed. The same Spirit is present. And the same promise is spoken to us. That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And by God's grace, anyone can be a part of God's everyone. That includes you and me. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. And may the peace of God which passes understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Let's close the sermon with prayer. Lord God, thank you for the promise that is ours today that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We call upon your name. We call upon you for peace, for deliverance from our troubles. We call upon you for the power that comes to us through your Spirit. And we trust in you to deliver all the gifts that come by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.